Welcome to the Level 1 Economics Summary Video Series. This video is a summary of the reading on Demand and Supply Analysis, The Firm. First, we need to understand the definition of profit. Accounting profit refers to net income on a company's financial statements. Accounting profit is simply revenue minus explicit costs. It does not represent implicit costs, also called opportunity costs. For a public company, the equity invested has an associated cost, which is the cost of equity. That is not included when you calculate accounting profit. For a small private company where you are using your own facility or you are not paying yourself a salary, then the rent of that facility or the salary that you are not paying yourself would be implicit costs or opportunity costs. Accounting income would ignore those costs, but economic income does not ignore. So economic costs refers to the sum of explicit and implicit costs. It is a more meaningful number to look at. The economic profit then is total revenue minus the total economic costs, which includes both implicit and explicit. So what is the relationship between economic profit and accounting profit? The relationship is that economic profit is accounting profit, which does not account for implicit costs. And then you subtract the implicit or the opportunity costs. You also need to learn this term, normal profit. Normal profit is defined as the accounting profit a firm must earn in order to satisfy equity holders. In this case, we are thinking of a large company where equity holders invest their money, their equity, and they require a certain return. That return that they require can be thought of as the opportunity cost or the implicit cost. So the normal profit is the accounting profit plus the implicit opportunity cost. If we are at normal profit, then the economic profit is zero. Economic rent is another term that you need to understand. Economic rent refers to payments to a factor of production in excess of the amount necessary to retain its current use. That is the factor's opportunity cost. So the factor's opportunity cost is the amount that needs to be paid to keep the factor employed. Any amount that you pay above the opportunity cost is economic rent. The economic rent will be high for a factor which has, a, which has an inelastic supply curve. So if you have a very inelastic or a vertical supply curve, then the price is determined by the demand curve. And if there is an increase in demand, then there will be an increase in the economic rent. And there is an example in the curriculum that talks about gold and the fact that supply is more or less inelastic when the demand goes up the increase is all economic rent. If you have unskilled labor, where there is at a given rate of let's say $5 per hour, you can get as much unskilled labor as you want, then in this particular case, no matter what the demand, the amount that you will pay is five. So you are not paying anything above five and in this scenario, there is no economic rent. So remember these sentences, when supply for a factor is perfectly inelastic, that's the left diagram, the payment is all economic rent. When supply for a factor is perfectly elastic, payments to the factor just cover its opportunity cost, so there is no economic rent. And you can take this one step further by saying that in the real world, there will be some combination of economic rent and what's called pure transfer earnings or the opportunity cost and the more inelastic the supply curve, the higher the economic rent. All right, now let's look at some definitions. Total revenue for any firm that charges a single price to all customers is calculated as price multiplied by quantity sold. The average revenue is equal to total revenue divided by quantity sold. And this would also be the price. Marginal revenue is the increase in total revenue from selling one more unit and the calculation is the change in total revenue divided by change in quantity. 
Factors of production are the resources a firm uses to generate output and these factors are land, labor, capital and materials. The production function shows production as a function of the amount of resources used by the firm. And here you need to understand these terms. Marginal product of labor. This is the additional output from using one more unit of labor. So note that this is a quantity. It is not a dollar amount. Diminishing marginal productivity leads to diminishing marginal returns. What this means is that if you add one more laborer and get 10 more units of output, then your marginal product of labor is 10. But as you keep adding more units of labor, then the output from say the next unit of labor will come down to 9 and the output from the next unit might come down to 8. So this is essentially diminishing marginal productivity. A related concept is marginal revenue product, which is saying that as you add one more unit of labor, what's the additional revenue? So this combines the quantity with the price. You also need to understand cost curves. And when we talk about cost curves, there is a short run perspective and a long run perspective. When we say short run, it is the time in which at least one factor of production remains fixed. Normally, if we think of capital and labor, then we say capital remains fixed, but labor is variable in the short run. In the long run, all factors of production are variable. These are the different types of costs. You have total fixed cost. This is the cost of inputs that do not vary with the quantity of output. Total variable cost is the cost of all inputs that vary with output. Total cost refers to the sum of all costs, fixed or variable, implicit or explicit. Marginal cost is the additional cost for producing one more unit. It is the change in total cost over the change in total product. So you can think of the change in total product as one. Then the change in total cost is the incremental cost for that one more unit. Average total cost is simply the total cost over the total product or the total number of items produced. Average fixed cost is the total fixed cost over total product. As you make more and more, the average fixed cost will come down. Average variable cost is the total variable cost over total product. So these are the cost curves and let's look at some characteristics. The average fixed cost slopes downwards as Q increases. So as Q increases, it makes sense. The average fixed cost obviously will come down. The vertical distance between the average total cost, which is the blue curve, and average variable cost is equal to average fixed cost, thus decreases as Q increases. So you are comparing the average total cost and the average variable cost. Initially, this difference is big because the average fixed cost is high, but as the quantity produced increases, then the average fixed cost comes down. So the distance between the blue average total cost and the green average variable cost comes down. Marginal cost declines initially and then increases as diminishing marginal returns set in. So that's the point over here. Initially marginal cost, the black line goes down, then it goes up. Marginal cost intersects average variable cost and average total cost at the respective minimum points. Average total cost and average variable cost are generally U-shaped. The minimum point on the average total cost curve represents the lowest cost per unit. So this would be the ideal point for a company to be at, the point where the average total cost is the lowest. The marginal cost curve above the average variable cost curve is the firm's short run supply curve. So this black line above the average variable cost, this is the firm's short run supply curve. Clearly below this, it does not make sense for the firm to supply because the average variable cost would be high. Shutdown and break even. In the short run, a firm may be selling at less than average total cost and generating an economic loss. A firm should continue to operate in the short run as long as the price at which it is selling is greater than the average variable cost. Losses from shutting down would be equal to total fixed cost and would be greater than the loss from 
continued operations. If selling price is less than average variable cost, the firm will minimize losses in the short run by seizing or ending operations. In the long run, a firm should shut down if the price is expected to remain less than average total cost. And here is a table which summarizes what we have just talked about. Economies and diseconomies of scale. If you think of this dark green line as the long run average cost curve and these small blue curves as the short run average cost curves, I'll give you a simple analogy to relate to this. Let's say a company has a small manufacturing facility. In the short run, the variable cost is labor, but the plant is fixed. So there is a given short run curve. Then the company realizes it can build a second plant. So that would represent the second curve, which is the relationship between cost and output given two plants and so on. So the optimal point might be point A, where the company has four plants. As long as the costs are coming down, we say that we have economies of scale. But if the company keeps expanding, then inefficiencies crop in and the average costs start increasing. We then say that we have diseconomies of scale. Input levels and profit maximization. Marginal revenue product is the addition to total revenue from selling the additional output or marginal product from employing one more unit of an output. At each extra, as each extra unit of input is added, output increases but at a decreasing rate and this is called diminishing marginal returns. To maximize profits, use additional units of an input until marginal revenue product is equal to unit cost. You should also minimize the cost of production. To minimize the cost of production, it must be the case that marginal product of A over price of A. What is A here? It is a factor of production. So if you've been doing curriculum examples, there is a scenario where you have three factors of production, skilled labor, semi-skilled labor, and unskilled labor. The MPA stands for the marginal product of, let's say, skilled labor, divided by PA refers to the price of skilled labor. So all these ratios, the ratios of marginal products to prices of the different factors of production, when they are equal, then we have profit maximization. The additional output per dollar spent on each input must be equal at the margin. If marginal product for labor divided by price of labor is greater than the marginal product of capital divided by price of capital, then using more labor and less capital to produce the output will decrease costs. If you found this lecture helpful, then I'll be very grateful if you can do three things for me. Number one, like this video. Number two, like my Facebook page. And number three, visit analystforum.com and there add my logo to your studying with profile. You can see this slide for help on how to do that. Thank you very much and good luck with your studies.